Hello everyone, this is Angela Prophet with Paperless Planners. Thank you for joining me on becoming more productive and more profitable by going paperless. Today I'm going to review Dropbox and how awesome Dropbox is. If you don't have a way to back up your documents, Dropbox is definitely a way that you can get started and it's free. It's great. So the first thing that you're going to see on the screen is where I went to dropbox.com. So if you don't have an account, you can create an account here. And once you create an account, I would suggest downloading it onto your computer so that you'll have the shortcut, which is right up here at the top right hand corner. So this is what it's going to look like from the website. And you've got your settings in here. So if you go up to your name once you have a once you have an account, you go to install and that will install it onto your computer and then it's going to look like this. So it's much easier on the eyes to look at and these are folders that I actually created in this folder on my desktop, but it's always being backed up to Dropbox. So if you want to create folders, you right click or tap with two fingers, go to new folder, and you'll notice the way that I organize my folders. I do like things in alphabetical order, but I also put a star which makes it pop to the top because these are the folders that I'm most frequently accessing for my clients. So for example, you could number them, whatever, whatever you want to do, however you would like to see it. But basically, if you plan to have a mobile office, the only way that you're really going to enjoy using your iPhone and your iPad is making sure that your documents are in folders, organized, the, the names of the documents are appropriate, and you're just not searching for things when you don't have the documents have a name with a rhyme and a reason. And I'll go over that as well. So you, you'll want to create folders here. When you first log into Dropbox, you're probably only going to have two folders. One, it's going to say getting started, so it will explain Dropbox. And two, your camera uploads. If you do not want your pictures from your iPhone to sync with Dropbox, go up here to the application, go to your settings right here, go to preferences, go to import, and make sure that you click off you do not want a checkbox here. Now if you do want to use your camera uploads and if you don't use PhotoStream, it's a great way to back up your pictures but do know that sometimes it may resize the image so if it's a large image and you're running low on your space because you get 250 free megabytes with Dropbox, you can always purchase more each time that you share Dropbox with someone who doesn't have it, you get free space, so it incentivizes you to share Dropbox with others, which is a great little thing. I don't think I will ever have to pay for Dropbox because I've shared it with so many people. A lot of photographers use it now as well. But again, in the preferences, make sure that you have everything set up the way that you want it set up for your account. Now if you do start to run low on space, for example, if you get a notification that says your disk space is low on your computer, you can always go to Selective Sync, which it's going to show all your folders in Dropbox. These are all of our folders in our company Dropbox. And there's some that are pretty large. The files are large, the pictures are large, so I have unsynced specific computers. You'll notice where they are not checked, so they don't have a checkbox next to them. And they're still, they still live on the website, but they're just not being downloaded onto my computer because it does take up space. So if you need to free up some space from your computer, make sure that you use Selective Sync. We already covered the pictures. And then obviously you want to make sure that you're online when your Dropbox is syncing. So let's talk a little bit about what's inside folders. So for example, I'm going to click on our 2015 folder. And you're going to see that we have a naming mechanism, so everything has a rhyme and a reason. So the way that we have chosen to do this is the date of the event, the bride's name, last name, and the groom's first name, last name. Now, if, if it's a conference or an event, you know, obviously we, I like to see everything by date, and then we name it whatever is appropriate. And then inside each of these folders for each of our clients, 
we also have a very strict policy on how we name things so that every client has the same folder set up. For instance, we keep some of their emails. If we have a lot of hotel information, I always keep past quotes because sometimes we always go back to those. Well, not always, but sometimes we might go back to those and add something back in 30 days before the event. We have pictures. I put venue information. And then we share the Dropbox with the client. So they're able to upload things and share their information with us as well. This couple mixed a few songs together. So they shared a Dropbox with the folder and then we shared it with the band and the DJ. And then as you can see, each file that comes in from a vendor that's emailed to us or shared with us through Dropbox, we change the name file. And you can simply do that by dragging it from your email. And you can drag with by using three fingers if your trackpad is set up that way. And you drag it right into Dropbox. So let me give you an example. For example, here is an email right here that has two pictures in it. And I like to use various screens, as you can see. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm hitting F3 on my keyboard, and then you can add desktops up here at the top. You're only going to have this if you have the newest operating system. But you can take the picture in the email, select it, take three fingers, drag it over into Dropbox, and click and the image is there. And I can see this very quickly because under date modified that's the latest date. So I'm going to tap just one time and you can very quickly rename the picture. And it's as simple as that. Now we specifically use Dropbox for items that we are not editing. So you'll see a lot of PDFs from vendors. And the reason we do this is because if I have a document, like let's just say a Word document, opened up on my computer and then the client has it open on their computer and the groom has it open on his computer and we're all in different locations and we're all hitting save, which you still have to hit save in Dropbox. Dropbox sometimes gets confused and I've been working on a timeline before which this is a sample timeline, and as you can see, the timeline's, oh, this one was 11 pages long. So if I lose my changes, I've wasted hours and hours of my time. So I make sure that if I'm editing something, I only do it in Google Drive. And Google Drive saves in real time. It shows me who's logged in, when they're logged in, which is great. So our rule of thumb in the office is if we're editing a document, put it in Google Drive. If we are only dropping documents, we use Dropbox. And again, as you're using Dropbox, I encourage you to make sure that each of your file names makes sense so that you can easily find something. I've literally replaced every folder, Manila folder and notebook that I used to have for every event that I plan with a folder in Dropbox. So I can go to anyone's computer and access any of my clients files at any given time. If something were to happen to my computer, my phone, and my iPad, I still have the luxury of being able to download any of my clients information anywhere in the world as long as I can get on the internet. So other folders that I recommend having are a business folder for your business and inside It's three o'clock. That's to stay on track with time. <laughs> And in, in the business folder, I've got logos for the company. Um, I've got receipts that we keep up with, our taxes. Other templates that we use are credit card authorization forms that we send to clients, a letterhead for your company. Anything that you have to do twice, make a template for it. That's the most productive. This is a map to our office. This is the menu of services for clients that inquire about our services, and then our planning service agreement, our contract. So anything having to do with your business that you're going to use quite frequently, I would suggest making sure that it's in Dropbox, making sure that it's safe and backed up. Other folders that I suggest having are such as conferences, 
I, when I attend BizBash, Cater Source, Engage, the special event, I always have information that I bring back from there. And if I have any paper, I typically take a picture of it and then log it into this online folder so that I can be completely paperless when I'm traveling, especially when I'm traveling. iBooks is an awesome free application. It's right down here. It's called iBooks Author for Macs. And it allows you to publish books through iTunes. And we build lots of things on iBooks. We do ceremony programs, welcome itineraries. There are a lot of cool things that you can do with iBooks. For example, this was a welcome packet that one of the girls worked on. I'll give you an example. So we try to keep all of our iBooks backed up in Dropbox. So I got that message there because some of the fonts that she used on her computer, they're not exactly on my computer. So that's why you see that message. So it's a great little application to use. Again, it's free. We have an intern program, so we have a folder for our interns. Some of the organizations that we're part of, the Entrepreneur Organization, the Event Planning Association, the ISIS and Tweeza, so all the organization meetings that I go to, I keep the information in there. And again, if they give us paper agendas or paper notes, I typically take a picture of that. I keep vendor, vendor information in here. I share folders with a lot of my vendors. And then also I have a website analytics folder. So each week I get our website analytics emailed over to us through Google, which is a free service. So I like to keep up with that. And then I can share that folder with my branding manager so that he can watch and make sure that videos and pictures and whatever content we're putting out on our website that they're effective. So the next great thing that you can do with Dropbox is share it. So through this folder, for example, you're going to right click or tap with two fingers and then you can go share this folder. And you're going to have it pop over. It should open up um, your web browser automatically. And then you, you put the person's email address in. You can allow them to edit it or just view it. I allow my clients to edit it. If they accidentally delete something or drag it out, you can always go to the website and restore it. And a lot of people don't know that. So don't panic if someone removes something because you can go and get it back. I believe it's there for roughly 30 days, though. So make sure that if, if you're missing something, you get it before 30 days. That's the current rule right now and they're always changing but that's how you share it one interesting thing is I don't believe that you can share a folder within a folder so there might be a specific document for example that I want to share with someone so you click on the document do two fingers or right click and you can share the Dropbox link now I most often use this you see the notification come up and I clicked it I most often use this on my phone whenever someone's asking for something and they need it quickly I'll go to the clients Dropbox folder on my phone and then send them a Dropbox link and you can text it or email it so it's very very efficient when you're on the go and you have a mobile office if you have any questions about Dropbox or how to set it up or if you're running out of space and need more share it if you found this video helpful please like the video and pass it along good luck